Hey everybody, this is Mike, and I'm going to be doing a playthrough of Root from Leader Games. Specifically, I'm going to be trying out the Better Bot Project AI bots for the game that allow you to play it solo or cooperative. This AI system was developed by fans and based partially on the mechanical marquee that came with the Riverfolk expansion for the game, but it's been expanded to include every faction currently available. I became even more interested in trying it out because on the current Kickstarter for the second Root expansion, The Underworld, the designer and developers of Root have teamed up with the people who created the AI system to make it an official part of the game. Now for clarity, I have not played Root competitive. I bought the game specifically to try out the solo and cooperative mode, but I'm really enjoying it and I want to show you how it all works. So I'm playing a three-player game, me and two AIs, and the AIs are not uh, allied together, although you can play that way. They're going to be fighting each other as well. I'm playing our friendly Irie dynasties, those birds up there in the corner. I'm facing off against the Marquis de Cat and also the Woodland Alliance. Now, the Alliance is not on the board yet, but the Marquis, you'll note, basically controls everything on the entire map. Now, for those who don't know about Root, this is from Leader Games, which does asymmetrical games. They previously did Vast. So each of these factions plays quite differently, although I'm happy to say not as different as they did in Vast because I found the asymmetry there to actually be a little tough to play with. The game is going to be fought on this big board here with several clearings. Those are like the little sort of circular spaces here and there. And each clearing might have some building spaces. You'll see the marquee already starts with three buildings and I have one roost building up there in my corner. And clearings are connected by these pads which make them adjacent to each other. Each of us is racing to earn victory points on this track, though we earn them in slightly different ways, and the first player, or AI in this case, to get to 30 points wins the game. I start with six warriors and one roost, which is my only building type up here in my corner, and the Marquis has a single warrior on every other clearing the entire game. They basically rule everything at the beginning. They've got this keep, which is their main castle, and no one else can really place pieces there unless they actually move in to invade it. And as I mentioned, they start out with three buildings. And note that each clearing has a certain number of spaces for buildings, except that some are covered up by these ruin tokens, which if I had the Vagabond, another faction in the game, they could get rid of those. But as it is, there's going to be dead spaces that nobody can build on in the game. Now, each of us has a board to kind of help with the play of the game, including the AI. And it's really nicely made. You can see that it has detailed steps for what you do on each turn priority for where the cats tend to do their actions and it holds all of their buildings remember they have one of each type already on the board and five more waiting to be built which is their primary way to earn more victory points and they've got a huge army the woodland alliance has a much more moderate force but again has all the instructions for what you do on your turn as well as the sympathy tokens and base tokens they'll try to play down Basically, the Marquis kind of rules the Woodlands, and they took them from me, the Irie, so I'm trying to take them back. But the Woodland Alliance represents the, the downtrodden who are trying to revolt against both of us and take their land for themselves. Finally, we've got me, the Irie. I've got what's called my Decree up here, and I'm going to put some cards in there in a second. That'll control all the actions I can take. My uh, big army of followers, similar to the Marquis' numbers. The Roos I'll want to build, which uh, kind of like the Marquis buildings, will give me victory points. And finally, I have my starting hand of three cards. Now note that one of the ways the AI is streamlined is that they do nothing with cards. I'm the only one who has cards in the entire game. But they are in three suits, which is foxes, mice, and I don't have a rabbit card, plus a fourth suit, which is the wild bird suit. And I'm going to start with two of those as my loyal viziers, to help me with the running of my little empire. Each of the card has a suit, as I already said. They mostly have what you need to construct something. In this case, I can build T and get some victory points, or I can activate a special power if I have the number of clearings ruled that are indicated. So here I'd need to have three mouse clearings ruled, three fox clearings, one mouse clearing. The only step of my setup that I've not completed is I have to pick a leader. And the leader's going to give me a special power, like this person lets me get more victory points from items. This guy lets me do extra hits in battle. I recruit twice as fast with this one. And then this guy gives me extra victory points when I defeat uh, enemy's tokens. Now, this is actually a really important decision, so I'm going to explain it a bit. So the loyal viziers are going to start on two of the four columns here, recruit, move, battle, build, which each match up to the main actions I can take in the game. 
And it's going to be determined by which leader I choose uh, where those two viziers go to. So I'm going to control what two actions I have immediately. And the key thing with the Irie is that they have to play another card every turn, at least one, and they can play two, to the decree. And then they have to do that action. So let's say I played like a mouse to recruit, and then at some point I couldn't recruit to a mouse place anymore. Then I would go into what's called turmoil. Basically, my entire empire <laughs> falls apart for a little while, and I have to elect a new leader. So I want to do something that's going to let me avoid that and keep taking consistent actions. Now, what I found in my limited playing, and root experts, you can tell me if I'm wrong, I found that recruit and move are the safe actions because they're very easy to do consistently, and battle and build are the really dangerous ones. So what I want to do is try to get birds in those actions because they let me do my action anywhere. They're the wild suit. So with that in mind, the only way I'm going to get a wild build is if I take... Yeah, the only guy with build is the despot. So he uh, gives me an extra victory point every time I remove a building or token in battle. So I'm going to pick him as my first leader. That means I'm going to slot my viziers in the move and build action. So I'm going to get a wild move and a wild build action every turn. The other three leaders will hang out in case my despot gets deposed in turmoil. Hopefully that won't happen, but we'll see if they come into play later. Okay, with setup out of the way, we're going to take our first actual turn with the Marquis. And the order is going to be Marquis, uh, the Irie, me, and then the Woodland Alliance. So I'm going to be kind of sandwiched in between the AI. So to give a brief overview of what the Marquis will do on their turn, they're going to draw an order card. They're going to try to craft an item on the order for one victory point if they can. They're going to battle in clearings that match the order card drawn. And clearings have the same suits, fox, mice, and rabbits as the cards. They're going to recruit four warriors, so they get four new soldiers every turn, which is pretty crazy. They're going to build one of their buildings, which is how they get their victory points. They're going to move guys in crowded spaces. And then uh, this one won't come into play until later, but if they fail to build, they might take an entire extra turn. And then at the end of the turn, they get victory points equal to the number of buildings they built of the type built that turn. So if they build a sawmill, they'll have two built, they get two victory points. And again, they have this clearing priority, which is also the same for the Woodland Alliance. And in general, whenever they have to make a choice, they're going to go for the higher priority, which is the lower number. I know that's a little bit backwards. So like one, two, three, four, the corners are the place they most want to be because it's out of the way. And the like really hotly contested places in the middle, they'll generally try to avoid. So I'm going to draw their order card for the turn. And it is a bird card. This actually changes up how they work. So we're going to have a somewhat complicated turn. Know that there is no item indicated, so all we care about is the bird suit. If there had been an item, they would have built it for a victory point. So after revealing the card, they try to craft, but there was nothing to craft. And then they battle in every clearing matching the suit drawn. So in this case, they would literally battle everywhere where they shared a clearing with another player. But at the beginning of the game, they rule everything except my corner, and they aren't there, so there is no battling. They then recruit four warriors, and normally it would be spread evenly around the suit they had drawn. So if it was rabbits, they would put like one warrior in each rabbit place. But the bird changes it up and has them put it in the two lowest priority clearings they control, which in this case is right here, this fox clearing, and right here, this mouse clearing. If you notice the little clearing priority map, the fox clearing and the mouse clearing are 12 and 11, the two worst numbers of all, only slightly better than 10, the rabbit clearing. And then everything else is a higher priority, a lower number than the rest. Next, they build a building. And normally, they'd build a building matching the suit of the card drawn. But in this case, with the bird, they build the building they have the most of already. But when they're all tied, they just take the topmost one, in this case, a fox building. Now, they place it on the empty building space with the most warriors, because they can protect it. So in this case, we've got three warriors and three warriors here. Everyone else has one. And they go with the higher priority. This is number 11, that's number 12. So they're gonna put it right there. They've got a new sawmill. Next, they move warriors in excess of three in the uh, clearings they activated, which with birds is all of them. But since we only have three warriors in each of these clearings, nobody moves. We would escalate if they didn't build a building, but they did. So we're just gonna go to them scoring some points. They started with six sawmills, well, one on the board, and now they have two built. So they're gonna get two victory points. Puts them into an early lead, but we'll catch up quickly. 
And then we go to my first turn. If my hand is empty, I would draw a card, but I've got three cards. Then I must add one and may add two cards to the decree. And again, remember these are actions I'm going to do every turn. So if I put like a recruit card down, I will recruit every turn. But on the negative side, if I ever can't, then I go into turmoil and lose all the cards and some victory points. And note that only one card can be a bird, the wild suit. Now, I uh, don't have any of those, so I don't have to worry about that. And finally, there's the oh crud option that if I had no roost, like if I was totally wiped off the board, then I would get one for free. I'm not gonna have to do that. Okay, so in daylight, I can craft using roost. All I've got is a fox roost right now, and you'll note that everything requires either a bunch of fox roost or a mice roost, so I can't craft anything. So looking at my position, I currently have a move action and a build action. Now my move action is wild, so I can move from a clearing to an adjacent clearing. I've got three options for that. And then I've got a build action, which is gonna build a roost, but only if I rule the clearing and it has an empty space. Now ruling the clearing means I have more pieces than anyone else. So if I had two warriors and they only had one, then I would rule the clearing. But I have the special power that I also win ties. So actually even one warrior here would be enough for me to rule this clearing and be able to build a roost on this empty space. So I must add one card to the decree, but you know what? I'm gonna add two, I think, and actually make uh, give myself two recruiting of foxes. So I'll slot the cards in here, and now I've got two fox recruits, one wild move and one wild build. I can't add more than two cards, so my decree is done. And I'll note briefly that recruiting can be dangerous because if you get all your soldiers out on the board, you'll have to actually try to defeat them fast enough so that you don't over recruit and actually have to go into turmoil because you don't have any warriors left to place. So I'm gonna do my recruit, I'm gonna move wild, and then I'm gonna build a roost if I can. So I get two warriors in a fox clearing, which my only clearing is. And I have to choose where to move and build. And I'm gonna note that I have a mouse card left in my hand and I want to be able to add a card to the decree next turn. So just to be safe, I'm gonna to move to this mouse clearing. I can move as many warriors as I want with one action. And this time, yeah, I guess I'll keep it sort of 50-50. Actually, no, I'll bring one more. Now, I will note three is kind of the magic number because it makes the Woodland Alliance have a tougher time messing with us. And it's also the most damage you can do in one round with your warriors. So it's good to have three whenever you can. My final action is to build a roost. Note that I didn't have a battle action, so I don't actually defeat this cat. But because I'm tied or have more pieces in the clearing than he does, I still rule the clearing and I can build my roost freely. I gain the number of victory points indicated. So in this case, I get one victory point for having two roosts on the board. So not quite catching the marquee after their first turn. And I end my turn by drawing one card plus as many bonus icons as I have here. There's one under the two and one under the four. So I want to build to those roosts as quickly as possible. And I get a rabbit card. And for one rabbit clearing, which I don't have yet, I can build boots for plus one victory points. So maybe we'll try to do that later. Okay, so finally we've got the Woodland Alliance, and after this the turns will go a lot faster because I won't have to explain everything. But so they also reveal an order card to start, just like the Marquis. They craft if they can, just like the Marquis. And then they check if they can revolt. So the basic idea of these guys is they put sympathy tokens down in clearings, which just shows the people there uh, kind of want the Woodland Alliance to take control. And then in a future turn, they can potentially revolt in that clearing, which destroys everything else in that clearing. All of my pieces, all of the Marquis' pieces can really be devastating. If they revolt, they get to put a base down, and that's how they start recruiting warriors. But they actually get their victory points just by putting these sympathy tokens down, so they could technically just win by doing sympathy and never touching the bases. And as you might expect, the value of placing the tokens goes up as they progress. So if we don't keep them in check, they can be getting amazing victory points every turn. All right, so our card for the Wood Alliance is a mouse card. And look, there's a crossbow, which means they're gonna build that crossbow for free. It goes in their crafted items box and that gets them one victory point. And I'll note that if we were playing with a Vagabond, he could actually come to the mice and trade with them to get that crossbow for himself. But uh, since we aren't playing with a Vagabond, really having the item token has no purpose. So before they get into their turn proper, they've already tied me on victory points just from building their crossbow. Okay, now we check if they can revolt in a mouse clearing where they already have a sympathy token, but they have no sympathy yet. So instead, they're gonna do a double sympathy spread and then they're gonna spread sympathy again. So normally they try to revolt and then spread sympathy once, placing one token, 
But if they ever can't revolt, like in this case, they don't have a token to turn into a base, they get uh, two free spread sympathies if they have four or fewer sympathy on the board, and one if they have five or more. So in this case, they're gonna do two free spread sympathies, their third regular one, and that's basically gonna be the end of their turn. Now their priority is to first place in the matching clearing, remember they're looking for a mouse clearing that has the most pieces. <laughs> and I know this is bad for me. So you know that this mouse clearing has five pieces, the warriors and the buildings all count. This mouse clearing has five, plus my ruse, plus the cat, seven. So they're putting their first sympathy right there. Now when they place in a clearing that has at least three warriors, they get one fewer victory point than they would usually for placing that token. But in this case, they get zero victory points for their first token anyway, so it didn't impact them at all. Now they need to place two more sympathy, remember, and after the first one is placed, all the rest have to be adjacent to an existing sympathy token. So the only time they can place wherever they want is on the very first token placed. Now the first priority is to place on a mouse token, but note that none of the three adjacent uh, clearings are the mouse type. We've got two fox and a rabbit. So the second priority is to place on a clearing that does not have three warriors, because again, they get fewer victory points for that. So the only one that matches is right here. They're gonna put a sympathy on this rabbit clearing. And note that this token does give them one victory point, and since they didn't go onto a clearing with three warriors, they are going to get it. Brings them up to two victory points, tied with the marquee. And finally, those are their two free sympathy placements because they couldn't do a base, couldn't do a revolt. Now they get their regular one, and uh, in this case, they can go up to my birds. You can't really see them, but there's three there, three here. None of them are mice clearings, which would have been their preference. So they're going to go to the only clearing that does not have three warriors, even though it's not a mouse clearing. So I'm not too unhappy about this. Yes, they did go into one of my clearings, and I'll definitely have to clear them out before they destroy me. But uh, they also messed with the cat a bit, which makes me happy. And they get another victory point, taking the lead on the first set of turns. Now they would end their turn by doing some things with warriors if they had a base to place warriors, but until they have a base, they cannot actually raise a military, so they just have sympathy right now. Okay, back to our friends the Marquis for their turn. And they get a fox suit, and they do get an item they can build, in this case, a boot. I know that the boot is worth one victory point, but for the AI, no matter what they build, it's always worth one victory point, so they don't really care. And ties the Woodland Alliance with three victory points. Next, the Marquis resolves a free battle in every matching clearing where they share a space with enemies. So in this case, uh, the Fox clearing is shared with a sympathy token, but the Rabbit clearing, the Mouse clearing, they don't fight in. Now we'll get to battling when it actually matters, but here you get plus one hit automatically if there's no warriors defending. So they're gonna destroy this sympathy token no matter what. Now when players destroy sympathy tokens, they get something called outrage that uh, gives the Woodland Alliance either one of their cards, discarding it, or a victory point. But when the AI destroy each other, in this case, the cat gets a victory point for destroying a token because anytime you destroy a circular or square token, square being the buildings, you get a victory point. But the Woodland Alliance doesn't get anything for the cat destroying them. The sympathy token goes back to the board, so it's going to slow down their access to higher victory point values. And the marquee goes to four victory points for the destruction. Next is recruiting, and this is the regular recruit, unlike the bird when we got the first turn. So the marquee has three fox clearings in control. So they're gonna evenly place one in each. And the fourth one goes to the place with first the most enemies, but there are no enemies in either of them. And then the clearing with the highest priority, so that's over here, number six. They next build in the clearing with the most warriors, which is this four space here, four warriors. And speaking of the four warriors, they then move anybody from fox clearings to other clearings with the most enemy pieces. So here they're going to run from here into the clearing that I took last turn. But they are going to leave three warriors behind, defending themselves from the Woodland Alliance, just like I was doing. They would escalate if they didn't build a building, but they did right here. And finally, because they have built three sawmills, they're going to get three victory points. Now, it is not good that they keep on building the same type, so i got to try to get in there and destroy one of those if I can. Three victory points rockets them to seven way ahead of me. Speaking of me, as the decree currently stands, I'm going to recruit twice in my fox clearing, have a move anywhere, and then build one Irie. And then build one roost in a place that I rule. But if I don't destroy this sympathy token, then they could wipe out all this stuff in one go and really devastate me. 
The problem with that though is that I have no action that gives me a battle capability, so I'm gonna have to add one. And since I only have a mouse and a rabbit card in my hand, I'm gonna have to put a mouse card in battle, which means I'll have to battle in a mouse clearing every turn. Now that's fine for uh, next turn because I'll still probably have some cat soldiers there. But after that, I'm going to have to like force myself to find my way to mice clearings, and that's pretty challenging. So I could just let the sympathy token sit there, but it's worth a victory point to discard it, and again, it could totally destroy me, so I'm going to get rid of it. So I have to add one or two cards to the decree, and like I said, I'm going to add this mouse card to battle. So going into daylight, I could craft an item, but note that this requires controlling a rabbit clearing with a roost, and I don't have that, so I can't build these boots. So I'm going to resolve the decree. Two fox recruits, move anywhere, battle in a mouse clearing, build anywhere. So the recruiting is simple. I just place two guys. The move is more complicated. I need to get somewhere where I can build a decree, and I also want to get a rabbit clearing. So this clearing has two buildings, not in as much of a hurry for me to get there. But uh, this one has only one, so I'm going to send... Hmm. I can send two or three, but here's the thing. The uh, sympathy token is right here. So it's, well, but I'm about to destroy it. I think I'm gonna send three guys down here and leave uh, only two back since I am recruiting there every turn. Okay, now I battle. You're still not gonna see a regular battle because I'm gonna choose to attack the Woodland Alliance. You have to choose which of the two you do. And the AI could do this freely, but for me, I have to discard a mouse card if I have one. If I don't, the Woodland Alliance gets one victory point for free from the outrage of me attacking them. That means both the Woodland Alliance and I gain one victory point, which is great since the cat is in the lead. Note though my leader's ability, if I remove at least one enemy building or token in battle, score one point. So I get an additional point for destroying the Woodland Alliance token in that battle. Next I have a wild build action, and the only place I can build a roost is right here, because uh, something I didn't mention is that you can only have one roost per clearing, so I can't like double up over here. And that does free up my most valuable spot to get to early. Two victory points this turn, and I get a second card when I draw. So I'm going to have uh, three cards with my existing rabbit card. So that pushes me up to five victory points ahead of the Woodland Alliance, although they're about to go, but still behind the marquee. And I'm going to draw two new cards. Oh, nice, a bird. I want that to give me some more flexibility in what I do. And another item in a bunny clearing. Oh, actually, a mouse clearing. But now I have one of each type, so I can actually build both of those next turn if I really want to. All right, our friends the Woodland Alliance got beat back quite a bit. They only have one uh, sympathy token left on the board in one of the marquee spaces, so I would love if they built a base there instead of spreading more. Drawing the card. Ah, yes, indeed. So we got a bunny card, and we're going to see what happens with that rabbit clearing. So since the rabbit card drawn has no item to craft, they're going to go straight into the revolt step. They do have a sympathy token on a rabbit clearing, and this is the only option they have. So they're going to build their base there and remove all enemy pieces from it. So that cat is destroyed immediately. Then they spread sympathy once and only once in this case because, remember, they only spread extra last turn because they couldn't build a base. They want to go to a rabbit clearing, but there are none available. So they're going to go to the only clearing that does not have three warriors. And they do get one victory point for that, but that's actually their only victory points for the turn. So they tied us up. I thought they'd blow past us. Now the final part of the turn with warriors is if they had three warriors on a base, they would discard them all and spread an extra sympathy. That's called organizing. But then they recruit one warrior on each base, so they're going to get one free warrior there to help defend it. All right, now we go to the marquee, and note that they're running out of warriors, and they're going to get free victory points if they can't place four warriors each turn. So I'm going to have to try to fight them, or hopefully the Woodland Alliance will keep on taking them down. I'm really hoping they don't draw a fox or bird card this turn because that would be devastating to get that many victory points. Ah, but it's a bird. Oh gosh, and they get to uh, craft the boot that I was going to try to get. All right, they're definitely going to be the ones to take down because they're going up to eight and it's going to be a lot more in a moment. So next, with a bird card drawn, they battle in every single clearing. So in this one, we have the simple case of them removing the sympathy token and getting one victory point. That takes them to nine out of the 30 needed to win. But over here we have some real battles. Let's see how the battle mechanic works. We'll go ahead and start with this clearing where I have five warriors and they have two. And that'll be significant in a moment. So the battle mechanic is quick and simple and I really enjoy it. You've got two D12 dice with an equal distribution of zero, one, two, and three results. 
The attacker rolls both dice. They deal damage equal to the higher result, and the defender equal, deals damage equal to the lower result. But they're limited by the number of warriors they have. So in this case, the Marquis had two soldiers, two warriors. So even if they rolled the three, that's only do two hits to me, removing two of my guys. Whereas I had three warriors, so if we somehow like did a double three, we'd both remove, or I'd remove three of his if he had them. So rolling. Okay, so he got a three, I got a one. Now he can't take away three because he only has two warriors, so he does take away two of mine. And then since I got a one, I take away one of his. Next, we'll resolve this battle with one Marquis Warrior and three of mine. Okay, so uh, we got a three and a one. So he gets the three, I get the one, but it's not going to matter too much. Because since he only has one warrior, he can only defeat one of mine. And uh, since I got a hit, I defeat his, and he's not in that clearing anymore. He's going to recruit four warriors again, and he's going to go in the lowest priority clearings, as he does with bird orders. He's then going to build, and he's going to build another sawmill, because with the bird card, he builds the one that he has the most of, so this is not good for me. He builds in the clearing with the most warriors, but note that both these ones with five warriors are full. This one with three warriors is full, so actually this one with two warriors is where he chooses to place the sawmill. Next for his move action, he's going to move uh, warriors from any clearing with more than three. So for this one, he wants to go to a place with enemy units, but none of the pads connect to that. So he's going to go to the highest priority clearing, which is his keeps clearing right here. Okay, then for these two, he's going to go to the place with the most enemy pieces, which would be my clearing here with three warriors and a roost. That's four, which is more than the Woodland Alliance with three and more than over here with three. So these two guys are going to come join his other friend and almost tie me up over here. And bird cards have the added bonus, terrible bonus, of immediately triggering a battle. So he's going to fight me here right away. And we both got three warriors, so this could be bloody. Oh man, he got two of mine and I got none of his. So note now that he rules this clearing. So he could, for example, recruit here next turn. Because I have two pieces and he has three. So even with my winning tie rule, I still don't beat him. So with four sawmills built, he blasts ahead to 13 victory points. Oh my gosh, I gotta blow some of those up. Okay, going to my bird song, I need to add one or two cards to the decree. Definitely gonna add my bird, and then I'll add one of my rabbits as well, I think. So I'm gonna put the wild bird card in the battle column so I can start attacking some of the sawmills that the cat is winning with. As for the rabbit card, I can either, hmm, I can recruit there or move. I don't think I have enough movement to actually attack effectively, so I'm gonna go ahead and add a move. And then going to daylight, I am gonna craft this T. I only get one victory point, that's a negative of the birds, but I do have a mouse clearing. Or no, actually, oh man, I don't have a mouse clearing because they took it from me, so never mind, I just gotta hold on to this. So I'm recruiting twice with foxes, moving once from a bunny clearing and once from any clearing, Battling in a mouse clearing and any clearing, and then building in a bird, uh, sorry, building in any clearing. Now it's important to note that if I don't set up a roost build this turn, then I'm going to automatically go into turmoil because I have one build. So my main options are here or here because I can't really, uh, you can't see it, but I can't defeat the one sawmill in the other location. And I have to move once from my rabbit clearing and then once from any clearing. So in this case, even though it's probably unwise, I think I'm going to abandon my roost. Oh, man. Then I'm going to send three warriors down here. I'm not getting the uh, sawmills yet, but at least I'm uh, taking some more of the cat spaces. I'm leaving this little jerk over here alive, but uh, I'm not sure if there's much I can do about it. So I've got two battles. One has to be in a mouse clearing, and then one can be wild. But in this case, I've got fights in mouse clearings, and you can attack multiple times. I'm actually going to roll here first. And uh, if I don't defeat enough of them, I might go there again, or I might go over there. So this one is four of my warriors versus three of theirs. And nice, I defeat three and I get one. Didn't need the extra battle here. All three of their warriors are defeated and I only lose one of mine. Now for this clearing, it's two versus one. Let's see how we do. Okay, well, uh, we each got at least one, so we're each just gonna lose one warrior. Finally, I am going to build my roost right here. It's in definitely some danger because there's lots of cats nearby, but at least I'm still getting my victory points. Speaking of victory points, I get three for the action right there, but still well behind the marquee and not really catching up yet. I'm going to end by drawing two cards. Uh, no, man. Oh, gosh, it's all rabbits. I've got another item, um, and I do have my mouse clearing under control again. And then cobbler... 
at the start of evening may take a move. That's pretty powerful, but right now I only control one rabbit clearing, and I might lose it pretty soon. I'll note, by the way, that unless the Marquis invades me, I'm in a pretty bad way next turn because I have to battle in a mouse clearing. And currently, the only one that I could go to is all the way down here or all the way over here. Neither of which is going to be possible for me to reach, most likely. But hey, let's see what the, our friends the Woodland Alliance have to say. Hopefully, they'll attack the Marquis. Okay, so they drew a fox suit and, oh, they can build a bag for one victory point. Now note that they are, once again, only having uh, one sympathy token, but there's already a base there, and it's not a fox suit anyway, so they can't uh, actually build a base there. And that means they're going to get their double free sympathy placement before they do their regular placement, so that's three sympathy in one turn. Right, so first, you want to go into a fox clearing, and they actually have two options to go to, but they like to go to places that don't have three warriors, so they're going to go here first. And that's a one victory point spot, and there weren't three warriors to stop them from getting it. For their next sympathy placement, they once again have a fox option, and they prefer foxes even if there are three warriors, so they'll place that. That would have been one victory point, but because there's at least three warriors, they don't get it. But hey, they're threatening that sawmill. I like that. Ooh, they're threatening two sawmills. Okay, for their final option, they don't have any foxes. We've got mouse, 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 and a rabbit. So in that case, they go to priority order. Um, but again, they prefer not to have three warriors, so they'll go to either here or here. This is number 10, this is number 7, so ha, take that, cat, you've got an entire corner of your empire uh, overrun with Woodland Alliance. That third token was another one victory point, so they've tied up with me. And they don't have three warriors to spread sympathy again, but they do get another warrior recruiting it on their base. Okay, back to the Marquis, and this is the only part where the game can be fairly luck-based. Uh, if they get another wolf clearing or a bird that builds the most valuable, they're going to get five points instead of, like, maybe two. So let's pray they don't. Gah! Oh, man. So I don't know if we can win. They're just going to keep on going. we got to attack their, their sawmills as hard as we can. I just don't have the time. So they don't have an item to craft, so they're going to go right into another bird turn, which is not great for me. Oh man, it's also not great for our friends, the Woodland Alliance. They start a battle on every clearing. Oh my gosh, one, two, three of these sympathy tokens destroyed in one go. And yeah, this might be over before it's really begun because they're getting three victory points from that and there's no way for me to stop them from getting five for their building. Oh my gosh, you're going to have 21 in a moment. Okay, they recruit four warriors. And again, because it's the bird card, they're going to go into their lowest priority clearings that they control. They're going to build another darn sawmill, and uh, here all the places with a lot of guys are filled up, so the highest uh, priority for them is the place with the most warriors, their keep. Now they're going to move their excess soldiers into the place with the most pieces. We're tied here, but this one has more priority, so they're going to actually attack the Woodland Alliance this time. And their other two guys will go to the keep again, because there is no hostile force adjacent. So they're banned the Woodland Alliance over here. Now, the Woodland Alliance has a power that they automatically get plus one hit when they're defending, as long as they have at least one warrior there. So it's going to be two versus two, but the Woodland Alliance will get plus one automatically. Oh, okay, so the Woodland Alliance is the only one that does anything at all. Bye-bye, one little cat. And because the cat has five sawmills, oh gosh, they're up to 21. Yeah, and I'm in a bad way. I think I'm going to go into turmoil and just drop into last place. This is not my finest game. Remember, we're already going to recruit twice in a fox clearing. has to be there. And then I have to move rabbit and wild. Ah, gosh. So, I guess I can recruit in the rabbit place because I have some rabbit cards to play. But don't forget, if I can't get to a mouse clearing, then I'm going to go into turmoil in the battle phase. But I honestly don't think it was much helping that right now, so I'm just going to go ahead and do what I can. So for the decree, I think I'm going to go ahead and... I think I'm going to go ahead and place two rabbits in recruit to at least get some uh, warriors down before I go into turmoil. And then going to craft, I am going to go ahead and craft with my mouse clearing to get a bag for one victory point. Oh man, look at that gap. <laughs> but hey, I'm ahead of the Woodland Alliance for a second. All right, so now I recruit twice in the fox clearing and twice in the rabbit clearing. Then I have a rabbit move and a wild move, so I'm going to bring both these guys and 
Both these guys, I guess. Hey, let's bring the whole crew. Now note that as I mentioned, I'm supposed to have a mouse battle and a wild battle. I can choose the order they resolve, so I can have the wild battle before the mouse battle sends me into uh, turmoil, but that's uh, the best I can do. I'm not going to get to build. All right, so five warriors versus three, and note that even if I do three hits, I can't get through to the sawmill this turn. I'll have to fight again next turn, so that's unfortunate. And I get... Okay, two and two. Not too bad. I do have uh, enough to defeat the building next turn. And the cat, although they might reinforce, isn't having too many people for now. But I cannot have a battle in a mouse clearing, so I am going into turmoil. Okay, so first I humiliate myself, so I lose one victory point for each bird card in my decree, which is three. And there go all my positive feelings about how I was doing. Then I trash every card in my decree, so I'm going back to a super, super slow turn-by-turn turn way of going. The Vizier's hang out, but they're going to go to new spots in a second. We depose my Despot, and in retrospect, I think he was a pretty terrible choice to make, because his power didn't come into play almost at all, and having one build action to start wasn't really worth it. I would have been much better off with either the guy that gave me more hits in battle, or probably the charismatic guy who gets me extra recruiting, because I definitely needed more soldiers on the board. So speaking of that, uh, a free battle and recruit sounds pretty good to me. Although, hmm, maybe move in battle, because I already have a, I have a few guys on the board. So he would give me move in battle right away, and I would do extra hit with my attacks. I mean, if I have a chance of stopping the, the Marquis, it's going to come from that. So let's go ahead and put the commander in control. And just to note, it won't last that long, but the despot is gone, so I'd have to go through the other two leaders before I could bring him back. I get some new viziers and his preferred uh, actions, move in battle. And that's the end of my turn, but I do still get my three victory points, taking me back to what I lost from the uh, turmoil and my two cards. Woohoo! There we go! My two cards are... Ooh, great! A uh, bird and a mouse. Uh, I'm not sure... Oh, actually, I could recruit with the mouse. Yeah, so we'll see how that goes. Okay, back to the other losers in the game, basically feeding the, uh, the cat's victory points. And let's see. They get a mouse option. Oh, man, this is probably going to be terrible for me. And they are going to build a... Uh, money item for one victory point. And that ties in with me, but man, they're about to uh, blast past me in a second. Okay, they can't build a base, so they're going to do their little triple sympathy thing. And unfortunately, the only mouse clearing is my totally undefended uh, one over there. Next, there is no mouse clearing adjacent. The one you can't see above is a fox clearing, so they're going to go to the place without three warriors, which is right there. And then uh, they're going to go to a mouse clearing right there. Now, if the Marquis could just let them stay there to actually uh, revolt and destroy some of his buildings, that would be lovely. Now, all three of those sympathy tokens placed were one value ones, and they didn't go into any places with three warriors, so they do get the full three victory points. Additionally, they get another warrior. And note that next turn, if all these warriors are still here, they're going to organize, remove all three of them, and get an additional sympathy placement from that. Hey, it's our friend the Marquis's turn. How much we want to bet he's going to get a fox or a bird and almost immediately win the game? Oh, who called it? God. Yes, yeah, so this is the only thing I don't like about the Marquis. I really love the AI otherwise. And don't get me wrong, I could have been aggressively going after their sawmills to not make this such a devastating thing. But yeah, I mean, this is just going to completely destroy me. So there was no item to craft, so now they're going to battle in fox clearings. Uh, they've got a battle here, and hey, if they roll really high, I could actually destroy the, uh, the building on their turn. That'd be awesome. They're going to destroy the sympathy token uh, here, and that's it for fox clearings that are in question. Okay, so that gets them another victory point. You can kind of barely see it down there. They're at 22. And over here, I'm really hoping they roll like high for both of us, like 2-2 two, two, or 3-3. Three, three. That'd be amazing. But with the luck of the cat, it'll probably be like 3-0. Okay, 3-1. So I do destroy his only warrior, and he can only get one of mine because the building can't hurt me. He only had one warrior to actually attack. I know that the commander's ability is only if I'm the attacker in the battle, so I don't deal an extra hit to the building in this case. Okay, now he places four warriors. He does not control this clearing. I do, so he can't recruit there. So he's going to place a two down here, bringing it to four. And two over here, bringing it to five. Next, he'll build his final sawmill. And literally, the only place he can fit it is... Well, actually, wait. Here or here. He's going to go to the one with more warriors. I wish he would go there and get it blown up by the Woodland Alliance, potentially. So he's almost completely full of buildings, but that's his last uh, sawmill. So he's going to gain six victory points this turn. Good God. 
In terms of movement, the one extra warrior is going to go over here. But note that this was not a bird card, so they don't immediately attack. And these two guys are going to go to the adjacent clearing with the most enemy pieces. Yay! They just keep on encroaching on me all over the place. And they go up to 28 victory points. <laughs> this is embarrassing. Well, at this point, the game is basically over. So I'm just going to try to fight for as many victory points as I can and maybe get into second place. We'll see. So I'm going to recruit uh, with a mouse card and I'm going to battle with a bird card. You'll see why in a moment. So that means I recruit mouse, uh, move anybody, and then uh, battle battle. Okay, so the recruiting of a mouse puts me here, which gives me one guy to destroy that token. And I will note that when, this is something that hasn't come up at all, but if I move into a space with a Woodland Alliance token, I have to either discard a card of that clearing or they get one victory point. Uh, but recruiting does not make that same thing happen. I get an any move, so I'll just go ahead and mob this cat over here. And then I get two battles, and I'm going to just destroy both of these. And that does unfortunately give the Woodland Alliance a victory point, but I also get two victory points, one for each building destroyed. And hey, I got a sawmill, finally. So one victory point for the Woodland Alliance because I could not uh, give them a card matching the clearing for their outrage. I get two victory points, and then I still have four roosts on the board, so I get one, two, three more. Although again, the Marquis is going to win on their next turn no matter what, so it's not going to matter too much. And I get a bunny and a fox card. Okay, so the Woodland Alliance has a small chance to blow up uh, one of the cat buildings here, which would make me very happy. Let's see if we can draw a mouse. Nope, it's our old friend the fox that uh, was also for the marquee all the time. No crafting item there, so we'll go right into revolt. But there is nowhere to revolt, which means they're going to spread sympathy twice, plus their regular one, plus they're going to use the three warriors to spread again. So they're going to spread four times, certainly blowing me out of the water with victory points and putting me in last place, sadly. Okay, so they want fox clearing, so their first one will go there. There aren't three warriors there, so that's one victory point. We'll keep track. Uh, they're going down here for their next fox clearing because there are uh, none other ones than adjacent. So that does have uh, three warriors, so they get no victory points there, so that's one so far. Okay, for their third placement, um, there's no fox again, and they want to be in a place without three warriors, so they have to go to one of mine, and they'd rather have the higher priority nine one over the priority ten one. I certainly don't have three warriors there, so that's two victory points this time. They've reached a higher threshold, so that's three total. And then finally, they organize. They have three or more warriors on a base, so they remove them all to place another sympathy token, also worth two victory points. And this time they have reached a fox. Oh, gosh. So, uh, yeah, that was five victory points total in one turn. That takes them up to 18, still 10 behind the marquee, but definitely ahead of me. And they finish their turn by recruiting once at each base, in this case, just their rabbit base. Well, Marquis, what shall be our doom? Now, in a caring world, in a loving world, this card would be a rabbit or a mouse card, just to show a little bit of compassion and mercy before the knife is twisted. <laughs> of course not. They literally never drew, I don't know what the odds of this are, but they never drew anything except foxes and birds. So they are going to build their last sawmill, but hey, let's play it out and see what happens. Uh, no item to craft here. It's just going to be a bird turn of insanity. So the game technically ends when they get two victory points, and they're going to do that almost immediately. Uh, here we go. They got one, two, and they're already done. So that was a fairly ugly playthrough for me, but hopefully you can see how the bots take very quick turns, do make fairly intelligent decisions, although, man, the Woodland Alliance just got destroyed by the uh, the cats here. Who didn't make a wise decision was me not taking one of the more aggressive leaders right off the bat, because in a mano-a-mano -mano battle with the cats, I really need to fight more than, uh, you know, building roosts. So that was definitely a poor choice. Uh, next time I probably would have taken maybe the recruiting guy first to really build up an army to take out those sawmills. Because again, I could have just moved in and tried to destroy those things, but didn't have the chance. So again, Roots on Kickstarter right now, and you can add on the official versions of these AIs, which might be different than what I played with because they are getting balanced by the actual design team of Root. But I think they're great. I've really had fun. I can't wait to try out a co-op game because I've only played solo so far. 
So uh, right now you can download these. Uh, there's a link on BGG to the Dropbox. I'll put it in the show notes as well. You can download these if you have a copy of Root or if you find a copy of Root and play them yourself. They are a lot of fun and clearly pretty punishing. Good gaming, everyone, and I'll see you at the next stop.